right? So we're, we're showing this in a very controlled environment. Again, similar to what we just did on the Kali Linux, um, where we're showing the, again, kind of a different example, but again, when it comes down to it, you, sh you see how much they vary, right? You see, well, you see how much they're, they're very, very close together, not very, but they're very much close together. Now, there are easier uh, ways to learn Python. I'm just using Kali because, again, the, the IT OT convergence. Okay, so I want to talk about what are the common languages inside of PLC programming. Okay, so there's obviously going to be structured text, there's going to be ladder logic, which are the two most common, and then you're going to have function block and sequential function chart, which are there for processes and stuff like that, and largely function blocks used for drive controls and mainly for like different loops and stuff like that. So uh, when it comes down to what are the mo what is the best one to learn? If you had to learn one language, I would say structured text. Now, why would I say that? Because you have a, the common uh, expressions and the common things that you are learning and uh, I guess the way the programming is done flows into different things. So in this instance, I have a, a case example. I have an if then in statement. Uh, if this, then do this, right? Then end if. And this example is a case example. So this is a case example inside of what you know would be structured text now let's just look at this uh, this count right here so this would be uh, if count up is pushed or actual active then count equals one plus one count equals itself plus one and then count up is off so it's basically like a one shot else if count it count down is on then and the count is less than or greater than zero. That's a greater than sign. Let me pull this higher so you can see it. So if it's greater than that, then you're going to have your count equals itself minus one. So it's going to reduce. It's going to it's going to continuously count down. Else count equals zero and it's all zero. That's a basically a, a small example of if then else statement. And then there, there's a for do. Uh, very very similar um, in if then else type situation but a for do again is basically um, a little bit different as far as implementation you have a if then else statement which is uh, I have speed controls in here for that example uh, if you wanted to see that a little bit closer and then a while do so let me just talk about these for just a second and I hopefully I didn't lose you for a, a little bit because I do know I want to make sure you get a base common understanding of things that when you're talking about PLC programming you're talking about the ITOT convergence right this is what got me into the spectrum of kind of moving forward and, and progressing in my career and why am I doing this right so structure text I believe is one of the strongest things you can learn and why do I say that okay let me show you an example okay so I'm going to hop over here to my other VM, which is Kali Linux, and I'm going to show you, I have, this is Python 3. Now in Kali Linux, you're going to be, this is basically like, the uh, only reason I got into this was the IT OT convergence, and the more you get into IT, the more you're going to deal with different things, and obviously with the progression of PLC programming and stuff of that nature, Python is growing greatly in that atmosphere as well as far as automating things and automate automation altogether. Now PLC Python works as a tool to work with PLC programming. Let me show you an example of one running real quick. I'm just gonna call it Python 3 and then I'll call up loop. Okay and it's very important that you have your spelling right on this. So I'm gonna call it loop uh, PI, PY right here. So I'm gonna call that up and it's gonna run the loop right now again when it comes down to it I can open this up and show you the code behind it and you're probably going to be wondering to yourself that it looks awful much it looks pretty much just like the same if I looked at an if then else statement right so let's actually I tell you what let's actually build one in here so I can show you how closely these are done so I'm going to clear this off uh, and I'll make sure that I type my clear in right I'm gonna clear this off. Let's build another one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do sudo, then I'm gonna call g edit, and then I'll just call this uh, while. Uh, we'll call it while. 
.py. So I'm going to create a file. It's going to ask me for my password. Okay. I'm going to create a file. This is my new file. I'm going to start this off. And then I'm going to call. I'm going to put it where the location is going to be. So that's that's where it knows the location. Then I'm going to put while example just as a comment. And I'm just why am I showing this? I'm showing this as an example of why you would learn structured text as greatly as you would because it transitions so easy to different things. This is Python. But again, when it comes onto it, this is Python in Kali Linux, so there's Python in different environments and there's also uh, this works greatly with JavaScript as well. So you maybe want to uh, do a career shift later in life. You may want to adventure into different things. And you may your career may shift in just like mine did into the ITOT convergence. Okay, so let's talk about this. So if I say x is equal to, uh, let's just say five in the example. Okay, so I'm first declaring the variable x. Okay, I'm declaring that variable. Now next, I'm going to come in and I'm going to say, okay, well, let's do while x is let's just say less than 10 what we want to do is we want to come in and we want to have uh, we want to print X actually let's do this let's do uh, X is going to be uh, plus X or plus 1 this is called this plus one and then we're going to come in here and we're going to print it as well so we'll do print and then we'll print X okay so that's that and the indentions are very important uh, same thing in, in standard coding right indentions are very important but you see everything is kind of highlighted right so I'm saying okay so if I'm declaring my variable X right here I'm just a simple text I'm saying okay X is going to be equal to five while x is less than five, it's going to be, it's going to index up one, and then it's going to print itself. Now this is going to happen very quick, so I'm going to save it. I'm going to close that, and then what we call this is the while, right? So I'm going to pull that up, Python three, and I'm going to say while. Dot py, and then it's going to come in. And it's going to do print one. It's going to print six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then it's going to stop. Okay, so why did it stop? It's because we said, keep this in mind. I'm going to keep these side by side. I'm going to open it up right in front of you. So we said we were already, x was already equal to 5. Now, while x is less than 10, we are going to index up 1. And then we're going to print x. So we're printing the value right here. So that's why that's so powerful. Now I can open this up by going to my path right there or I could open it up by basically scrolling up just like this and open up just like this. So it's just a, a very simple to do. So what if I said X is equal to, uh, let's just say what if I said X is equal to eight and then I saved it. What would you expect to happen on this one? So if we did uh, Python three and then we did while three or while.py. I tell you what, we don't even have to do that. Let's come back and let's scroll up and do that. So now our example is going to say, being that we changed, we changed right here, we changed our value of x was a value is eight now. So eight's only going to go up two times if it's less than until it's greater than 10. So it's only going to print out nine and 10. Now, let's take this, what you just learned here, this same exact coding, right? While this is happening, we want to end that we want to do this, right? Let's take that example and let's go back to our coding over here and let's say the same exact thing that we learned inside of uh, structured text. And this, this is why I say stru structured text transitions to all languages very well. In PLC programming, you have two common main uh, implementations that you would actually I guess learn it uh, may main two two main main manufacturers that are going to stand out to you either Rockwell which is what we have here which is logic designer 
Uh, this is version 30, I think it's 32, 30, yeah, 32 in this environment. And we ha we're gonna have Siemens, which could be at uh, step seven. Uh, all of them are going to use three different or four different languages. Again, those languages are ladder logic, structure text, function block, and sequential function chart. Why do I say func our structure text transitions best? Is because you're going to use it in, in every bit of programming. Uh, look, com computer computer programming all hands down. A one is a, uh, a zero is a, is a basically a zero and a one is a one. So it's basically a binary concept. And if you understand that, you, you understand the way you control things. Is while let's just say for in in this instance, the increase button and the and the enable right. So the in increase button and the enable you do this right so th this bit has to be high it has to be a transition of one this bit has to be a transition of one then we're going to do this we're going to say the speed command is equal to itself plus one so while the the speed button or the increase button is being held on we want to come in here and index the speed up by one each time and then we want to exit that loop now the syntax is a little bit different but the same concept flows throughout, right? Whether I was with in the Python example that I showed you or in this example of structured text that I'm showing you right now. The example is exactly, basically the same. If this happens, do this. While this is, is happening, do this. But you also have to understand the logic behind the protection and protect the protection agents that you have. And this protection agents, I just, just so happen to have an if statement. So I'm protecting this statement up here. I'm having it said, okay, by the way, I'm saying if the, if the speed command is less than or is a, uh, yeah, greater than zero, and this actually then in this environment is less than zero, then I wanna turn in and turn the speed command on to zero. So I'm saying don't go less than zero. If you're less than zero, make sure you stay at zero. In this environment, I'm saying, okay, well, and this protect, protecting agents right here, or protecting environment, this little section of code, I'm saying if the speed is greater than 100, because we, won't, we don't want it to go up greater than 100 in, in the code that I've written, we're saying force it, the speed command to 100. So we're saying, oh, by the way, don't let the system go any, any lower than zero or any higher than 100. But oh, by the way, also too, if these controls happen, Go ahead, if you're within the zero and 100, go ahead and do your function. Go ahead and go up or down based upon what's being impressed, right? So we're, we're showing this in a very controlled environment. Again, similar to what we just did on the Kali Linux, um, where we're showing the, again, kind of a different example, but again, when it comes down to it, you, sh you see how much they vary, right? You see, oh, well, you see how much they're, they're very, very close together. Not very, but they're very much close together. Now, there are easier uh, ways to learn Python. I'm just using Kali because, again, the, the IT OT convergence and the penetration testing and stuff like that. I'm trying to learn that myself. And when I'm learning that, I'm trying to actually express that. I feel like if you can teach it, you can learn it. Um, and better yourself. So when it comes down to it, you also help other people. So this is why I'm trying to, trying to actually express this and show what I'm seeing related the most is structured text is the code that transitions easily from PLC programming to, to Python programming to going to be implemented into like JavaScript for that instance. If you can understand a logical uh, control statement, you can you can understand transitioning to another statement and reading that VBA code for that instance does that as well. Um, so I'm giving you common things that are, are very powerful and I think that the, the com most common thing that I see is powerful from language to language to code to code or from function to function is going to be the actual structure text. Uh, again that, com that comes down to basically just my experience and it, when it comes down to you may have different experiences right and you may see this later in life you may see this later and see that that Python really took off or maybe job JavaScript did a did this thing or maybe but you're gonna see things transition into your job that are gonna change your way of thinking right so that when that happens it's up to us to learn and to share and to grow together and I just think this is this is a very powerful tool 
So hopefully that was uh, educational and it helped you understand what, at least from my experiences sharing it to you, what the benefits are of, well, the, the strongest languages that we have, right? The common languages of uh, ladder logic, function block, sequential function, and structured text. Structured text to me is going to be the language that really transitions every, to everywhere and it's going to be more helpful to you at this point in time. Now, again, that could change, but I don't see that changing. I see that being a foundational element. And a lot of people in programming would prob probably agree with that, right? When it comes down to that. So hopefully this was a very valuable video and helped you learn and grow from that. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.